One minute. One minute. Because another account. Okay. Okay, so this is my guest start. Sure. Okay. So as I said, uh, I'm gonna go through the key points here that will help you in the exam. Um, so if you have any questions, please keep them to the last minute, all right? All right. I'll give you a time on that 10, 15 minutes to ask questions. All right, okay? So we'll just start, we'll go through this chronologically from chapter one to chapter three, highlighting key. Can you ask when you the chapter? That's it. At the end. The yes. I'll come back to the slide. Just note them. Okay. I'm going to tell you highlighted stuff that you should know, okay? So, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the signs of life, the characteristics of life, make sure you know these because what they, which, what they are and uh, so uh, why are they important for life, okay? So, for example, uh, if I ask you one of, what's one of the characteristics of living things, you should be able to pick from this one, okay? In the exam, all right? I'm going to go through this in more detail. So, uh, remember that living things are made up of four macromolecules, okay? So, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So, the four macromolecules. So, living things acquire energy. That's one of uh, the characteristics of living things. So, they get energy from what? From materials, so plants, what do they get the energy from? Photosynthesis, okay? Don't forget that. Alright, plants, plants, photosynthesis, animals, from plants, and other animals. So remember that, right? So remember that uh, an example, if I tell you what's, what's photosynthesis, okay? Or what's uh, aerobic respiration, okay? If I ask you what aerobic respiration, you should know catabolism. If I ask you photosynthesis, I call it. Okay? You got that? I like it. The reaction. The, uh, the reaction. So, uh, reaction is easy to understand. You see, if it's in uh, photosynthesis, it's CO2 water gives you glucose and oxygen. Okay. If it's cellular respiration, it's the reverse. Yep. Okay? And in this case, energy is required, okay? In this case, it's released. So, the main point here is to know that when you're talking about photosynthesis, it's anabolism, okay? Okay. And we use CO2, H2O to get glucose and oxygen, okay? But in catabolism, which is uh, aerobic as the respiration is an example of catabolism, okay? You get glucose, O2, CO2, CO2, and energy is released, okay? That's the highlight from this slide. Okay? So, I understand that the cell is the smallest unit. So, to be considered a living, you have to have at least one cell, okay? Um, we got different type of organisms. We have unicellular and multicellular. So I understand that. Unicellular, what does it mean? One, 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 one cell. cell. So one. in the exam, if there, there's a question or something that's asking you about unicellular, understand that it is referring to one cell, okay? If it's saying multicellular, okay. so an example of a unicellular is amoeba, okay? That's, is that a eukaryotic organism or prokaryotic? Amoeba is unicellular? No, amoeba. No, single cell. No, it's a single cell. Unicellular, okay? It has a nucleus. It's eukaryotic, okay? But unicellular. Unicellular. Alright? So that, we find this in eukaryotics, we find unicellular organisms such as amoeba, okay? So in prokaryotics, we find bacteria, archaea, okay? Okay. So, unicellular. Now, what is the major difference between these two? If we see... The nucleus. So, this one has a nucleus, correct? Its DNA is not in a nucleus here. Make sure you know that. So, you should be able to differentiate between these two in terms of... 
Uh, so you should be able to differentiate that, okay? It's on YouTube, you can watch it again. Okay. So it, it has a nucleus. nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by a so the membrane, okay? The DNA in a eukaryotic organism is surrounded by a membrane, what we call the nuclear membrane, alright? Yes. Well here there is no membrane surrounding the DNA. It's in a region called a nucleoid, okay? There's no membrane, so understand that. So these are some of the examples of, uh, you know, just skip that. Alright, so homeostasis is very important to understand that. Okay? So what is homeostasis? You should be able to define it. Yes. Okay? Make sure you know what homeostasis is. The definition and what it is, okay? So, in terms of cells, okay, what is the important feature that is maintaining homeostasis? The plasma membrane. The plasma membrane. What plasma membrane, okay? In unicellular. In unicellular, that means in single cell organism, the plasma membrane maintains homeostasis. Key point, okay? Say it again. The plasma membrane maintains homeostasis in single cell and unicellular organisms, okay? While in multicellular, it's the tissues, organs, organ system, they work together, 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 okay? So in unicellular, it's the plasma membrane, okay? But also the plasma membrane in multicellular. Yes, but uh, in multicellular, we've got these cells forming organs, tissues, they work together. Here yeah, it's one cell, so it, it needs some. That's membrane. the plasma membrane, okay? That's the key point to know, alright? Underline it. Okay, the third thing is that organisms sense and respond, okay? So if I touch something hot here, when I move my hand, what is this? Response. So it's a sense and a response, okay? Make sure you know that. You know that what sense and response is. So, you know, there's we given different examples here, okay? So, you should know that, uh, you know, uh, when organisms sense the, uh, the environment, uh, and for example, uh, in the morning, the plants, they, the leaves face the, the sun. sun. So, this is a sense and a response, okay? Yeah. So, okay? Key point there. But, and plus, you should know um, what these terms mean, okay? So the key point is to make sure what a sense and a response is. Okay? okay. Now, growth and reproduction. The key point here is that, you know, remember growth is increase in size, and reproduction is when you produce more of that organism, okay? Like humans, you know, we have children, so we reproduce. So, how is this controlled? Key point, make sure that the genetic material in the nucleus, okay? Okay, so in, in genetic material in humans would be in a nucleus, in bacteria, nucleus. in the nucleus, or in the plasma, uh, spread in the plasma membrane, okay? So, make sure you know that this is responsible for all of this, okay? So growth and reproduction is determined by <coughs> DNA, it can be in the nucleus or in other organisms, it could be in the nucleus inside the cytosol, okay? At the cytoplasm. Okay. So, growth, it's on YouTube. So, if you, if you didn't understand it, are you going to put this online? Yeah. Okay, so it will be online. Okay. Yes, sir. When I'm a child, I forgot my idea as well. I am now growth or developed? You are now developed. Developed? Yes. So life changes are development. Increase in size are growth. So you know a tadpole that lives in the water? Tadpole, everybody knows what a tadpole is? Before a frog becomes a frog, it's a little like a looks like a fish, it swims in water. The difference between the tadpole and the frog is 
its development. development, okay? Because it's changed into a you know different uh, stage yeah. of its life, okay? Like humans, we're inside our mother's uh, womb. Where when we're a fetus, we are different to what we are now as adults, okay? So we have developed. But when you have a child, that was that adult. Yes. They are just increasing size. What you have increased size body? too, but you have also developed body. as well. You could, could you sleep inside your mother's womb, and then no. is that a, is that a, a, a increase in size or that's a development? Development. Cool. So many things have changed since then. Do you have a hair? You have a, did you have a beard inside like your mother's womb? Develop it. No. Okay, what's the difference now between growth and development? Growth is basically just increase in size. Development is the life stages, okay? That's why you can grow yeah. and develop. Yeah. That's the difference between the two. You can yeah, you can grow and develop at the same time. Okay. With each development, there is a growth. Yeah. Okay? Well, in, in, uh, in humans, you know, there's a certain limit of growth and then we can develop further, you know, you can <coughs> become a genius, you know, study hard and become a doctor and still be the same size, okay? Yes, yes, this line is important, okay? Take note of it. Are you taking notes? Yes. yes. Every time I say something, I'm the one. Everybody. Everybody. Okay? <coughs> Alright, this is very important. Make sure you know that this would, uh, is the biggest. L biggest difference. So, more diversity, okay? So, more diverse range of organisms. You know, you got plants, you got animals, protests, fungi. Here, you only have one individual that can breed with itself. Yeah. Like humans, okay? Yeah. So in, humans are a part of eukaryotes, which is very diverse, okay? But when we and the species Homo sapiens, yeah. this is our species, okay? We're the only ones, okay? It's not very diverse. So two things to remember here: that diversity decreases as you go down. So number one, less differences. Okay, between the organisms as we go down. And this is the order from highest to lowest. Make sure you know that order. In the book it's incorrect. From the slides. Okay? So know it from the slide, this order. You taking notes? Yeah. And make sure you know that the organisms here are more diverse compared to here. You got that? Yes. It's important. Yes. So this this is saying this sentence is basically saying that it's coming from the most diverse to the least diverse. So we call this I um, what is it called? A hierarchical. Hierarchical means from more difference to less difference. Okay. Okay. All right. We should know that there is three domains, okay? Bacteria, archaea, and eukarya, okay? So the three domains. And eukarya belongs to eukaryotes, while bacteria and archaea belong to prokaryotes, okay? So... Prokaryotes and eukaryotes are the domains, actually. No. The domains are bacteria, archaea, and... You carry on. You see here? Yeah. This is the domain. And the these domains we find kingdoms. So when you carry out these four kingdoms, okay? Planta, fungi, animalia, protesta, okay? Here we find that there's two kingdoms. One is archaea bacteria, the other new bacteria. This is a kingdom. This is a domain, okay? Now, we classify them as prokaryotes because they don't have a nucleus. We classify these as eukaryotes because they do have a nucleus. Okay? Okay. So that's the take home message from there. So I just basically summarized that in that image, okay? So this is a summary of what I just said in that image, okay? Okay, the, the prokaryotes, what is it specific? Domain or kingdom or prokaryotes is 
you see here, without nuclear. Organisms without nuclear. Okay, that's what it means. It's not a dumb it's, it's referring to organisms without nuclear. So, in this case, they're single cell bacteria. Okay? Eukaryotes, okay, is referring to organisms which have a nuclei or nucleus. Okay? The amoeba is protesta. Uh, amoeba is protesta, yes. Because it has a nucleus. Yes. Alright? Yeah. Amoeba is protesta. It's written here, okay? Uh, no, not here, but in another slide before, okay? Okay, the level of organization of living things, okay? <coughs> e, okay? So, we need to know the different levels, okay? Of organization. Starting from the atoms all the way to the biosphere, okay? So, the students uh, in this classroom and some ants and, you know, wandering around, mm -hmm. uh, some bacteria on the floor, whatever. What do they all constitute? Community. 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 Because it's different species, okay? We, I didn't say the non-living things, okay? Alright? So, if there's a question like that, what did you say? Community. If I said there is individuals of these students, okay? And that student, the classroom has some students in it as well, in another classroom, or individuals or for the whole university of humans. What does that constitute? Population. Just the humans. Yeah, just the humans. Because it's one from the same species, remember? Okay? So if I ask you like that, you should say it's a population. What if I ask you the uh, communities of organisms living in uh, the desert with the sand and the dike farms and all these things. These are ecosystem. ecosystem because I'm referring to non-living. We got that? Yes. Make sure you have to know yes. these things, okay? Take note of that. Uh, community, it's like a bacteria with human with this community. Yes, living things only, all the living things. Population is one species, humans only, or ants only, or uh, sheep only, whatever. Ecosystem is the community, so all the living things, and the non-living things. Biosphere is all the ecosystems, okay? So ecosystem is living and non-living in that region. So in Saudi Arabia, okay? When you put all the ecosystems of the planet together, you get a biosphere, all right. I think we're finished here, so let's move on to, if there are any questions on that, I've highlighted the key points on that chapter, okay? So if you've taken note of those key points, you should be good for the exam. Yes? Is carbon, okay? 
all the macro molecules they have the building block of carbon. There's two type of reactions, okay? So dehydration, remember, is building molecules, okay? It needs energy. Hydrolysis, breaking down, okay? So in dehydration, water is lost, okay? So you're building things, you lose water. In hydrolysis, you add water and you break down big molecules into smaller molecules. So it is lose water. So in, in dehydration, water is lost. In hydrolysis, water is added. Okay, basic. And in this sense, energy is released, okay? This is very important to know, okay? So these are all what? Disaccharides or monosaccharides? Monosaccharides. Make sure you know that glucose, fructose, galactose, ribose, deoxyribose, they're all monosaccharides, okay? So monosaccharides are the simple units of carbohydrates. So there's six carbon or five carbon. This is used in DNA, while these are used in the sugars that we, you know, consume in our food. What's the short term energy and long term energy? Short term, quick energy, you know? Carbohydrates are, you know, uh, we can use used within function. hours, okay? Yeah. So if you eat food now, you eat, uh, you, your body will store some of the glucose as glycogen. And later on, if you haven't eaten after four hours, your body will start using that. It won't use the fat, so you'll use the glycogen, okay? So it's got short term. Short term. If you haven't eaten for two or three days, then your body starts breaking down your muscles and your. Uh, it will start with the the fat tissue, okay? It's long term. That's why you lose weight if you haven't eaten for a few days. Because your body's using the fat. Long stored fat, the long term energy. Okay. It's not going to use it until you go into hunger. Alright? It's just going to keep it there, waiting. So it's, it's long term energy. Alright, so. Eating must, you must know that these are mon uh, monosaccharides. The second thing is, you should know that these are disaccharides and ma you must know what they're made up of, okay? So you should know that sucrose is glucose and fructose. Maltose is glucose glucose. So it's a, this is a glucose fructose disaccharide, okay? This is a glucose disaccharide, okay? This one is a glucose galactose disaccharide. Very important to know, okay? And the other thing says that when you have uh, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides, it's more than two, okay? So oligosaccharides is a short string, polysaccharides long and branched, okay? So examples like glycogen, starch, cellulose, okay? So these are for short, short term energy, okay? In humans and in plants, okay? And cellulose is not for energy, it's a structural polysaccharide in plants, okay? In the cell wall. Yes? With the glucose and glucose, it must be maltose. Why do you put it glycogen? Well, this is glycogen because it's not disaccharide, it's a polysaccharide. Okay, gel code, gel code, gel code, gel code. Maltose is a disaccharide. Okay. So uh, when it's glycogen, it's many glucose together. Many okay. glucose. So it's not a disaccharide, is it? It's a polysaccharide. Yeah. It's more than two. More than two, it becomes a polysaccharide. In this case, glycogen, okay? So when you're making polysaccharides, what sort of reaction is it? It's a dehydration, okay? Dehydration water is lost. So, uh, yes, short term energy and structure in plants, okay? Okay, here, lipids, alright? Triglycerides, they're for long term energy, okay? As I mentioned, you store it as fats and oils, and they're used for energy that you need, maybe if you haven't eaten for two, three days or so. Your body, body starts breaking them down, okay? And you see that the structure is three, uh, three triglycerides, uh, sorry, three fatty acids with the glycerol and uh, uh, attached to a glycerol group. Okay? Three fatty acids. The second is the phospholipids, 
we studied this a lot, so you know this is the plasma membrane, okay? It's two fatty acids, a glycerol and phosphide group, okay? I'll come back to this later on in the chapter three, we'll discuss it more, okay? So for now, you should know that these two are long-term energy cell membrane, and very important to understand that steroids are also lipids and should know the structure of this as well. So make sure you know the structure here, here, and you should know that cholesterols and hormones, they have this four carbon ring, okay? Okay. So take note of this, this, and this. Okay? So the structure, three glycerol, so three fatty acids, glycerol, okay? Two fatty acids, glycerol phosphate group, okay? Structure is four carbon rings. Very important, okay? Okay? Yeah, so three carbon rings, not glucose, okay? You see that in chemistry, you know carbon ring? Yeah. It's a ring, like benzene, okay? So one, two, three, four. Four carbon rings and cholesterol and hormones, okay? That's the basic structure of steroids, okay? So you should know that. You should know that uh, phospholipids, two fatty acids, a glycerol and a phosphate group. Key. So, the, the drug is the name? So, yeah, the structures, okay? Basic structures, like here, you know, it says glycerol, three fatty acids, okay? Glycerol, two fatty acids and phosphate group. Four carbon rings. So underline, okay, those three points. Yeah, you got that? Okay, well, let's move on. Make sure you underline that. All right, amino acids. So amino acids are composed uh, of makeup proteins, okay? So these are the simple or the subunits of proteins. In our body, or in all living things, I should say, there's 20 different. And when you look at the structure, we find one carbon in the middle, okay? Yes. We find a amino group, okay? A carboxy group, or an acid group, and R, which is the rest. It is, it, this R group is different in the 20 different amino acids, okay? And the key thing to know here is that the amino acids are joined by peptide bonds. So how are they that form? So underline all this, okay? The carboxy end of one amino acid joined with the amino, amino acid in what sort of a reaction? Dehydration. Dehydration, okay? You make a note? Yeah. So peptide bond is connected uh, by okay. dehydration. Yes. So underline that. Okay? So then pro the, the amino acids form different lengths of uh, polypeptides or proteins or enzymes, okay? So depending on the uh, number of amino acids, it could be polypeptide, if it's more than 100, it's protein, if it's enzymes, remember enzymes, they're proteins, in the they biological catalysts, okay? So enzymes are biological catalysts, okay? okay? Polypeptides is not a protein? Well, it's considered a protein, but uh, here it's for a Three to hundred, maybe in this sense, it's it's considered as a polypeptide because it's shorter. Maybe because it uh, yeah. doesn't have function yeah. yet. Well, it does have function. Protein more than a protein. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the classification on this book is this, okay? To me, they're still considered proteins, okay? Yeah, because yeah, it's identified as polypeptide. Yeah, they are still proteins, okay? So, the, but we, we will have to follow the classification of this book, okay? And the book tells us not to go to Well, yeah, not necessarily. Way. It's just saying it, you know. It has a complex uh, yeah. structure. 100 is a protein and 3 to 100 is polypeptide, okay? okay. So okay. We, we, for the moment, just assume that, okay? But they are proteins, okay? Yeah. Just, just follow that, okay? That's what happened. We, so limit the question during the thing so we we can go through this. Alright, nucleic acids, okay? So this is the genetic material you find it in two forms. DNA RNA, they're made from nucleotides, okay? These things. Okay? 
nucleotide, the simple or the subunits of nucleic acids, okay? So we, in DNA, it's deoxyribonucleic acid, okay? RNA, ribonucleic acid. So, uh, when we look at the structure of nucleotides, very important, okay? Structure. Structure, look at it, it's made from a 5 carbon sugar. Is that pentose or hexose? Pentose, okay? So, in RNA, it is ribose. In DNA, deoxyribose, okay? So, in DNA, ribose, uh, sorry, deoxyribose. In RNA, ribose. Now, when we look at it, what is the nucleotide made up of? It's made up of the 5 carbon sugar and nitrogenous base, okay? This base here, okay? And a phosphate. One phosphate group, okay? So it's one phosphate group, a 5 carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So underline, okay? One carbon sugar, a nitrogenous base, and one phosphate group, okay? okay. The structure of nucleotides. So that's the key context, okay? Make sure you know that. Everybody got that? Okay, so in terms of ATP, we know that it's an energy molecule. It's a nucleotide, okay? Um, so it, it has three phosphates, okay? With uh, adenosine and the ribose sugar, okay? So it's used in energy. So uh, what happens is we get uh, hydrolysis, remember? One of the phosphate group is lost, we get ADP. So energy is released from that. Okay? By hydrolysis. By well, hydrolysis. Addition of water. That's the key thing that we need to know for that. Alright? So when we so when one phosphate group is, is released. One phosphate group is lost from the three, okay? It becomes ADP. It becomes ADP. This is the reaction, okay? So adenine tri three, adenine di two. Okay? Alright? That's the key messages. So everybody make sure what I'm saying is. Okay, I think we're going to break the ATP, we release so this is basically here, the cell doctrine is repeating what we've talked about before and the characteristics of living things. So we said, we, we remember we said all cell, all living things are composed of cells, so you have to be considered living, you have to have at least one cell. Also, uh, if you notice, just to repeat that I've put the uh, worksheets yeah. on the blackboard, so make sure you do those worksheets, okay? How do we know the answer? Do you want to send us a Can I give you the answer? Yeah, after we finish, to check. Alright, I'll give you the answer on... Uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a, let me give it to you on Sunday, okay? okay. Give you time to do it, you know. If I give the answer, you're not gonna learn anything. What does uh, so learn? If the student wants to cheat himself, yes, up to him. So yeah, yeah. I'll give you the I'll give you the key to the uh, to the questions on Sunday. Okay. okay? What is the question? Yeah, I just picked all the questions from there. So if there's questions not included, don't worry about them. 
you're interested, do you it. Okay? Uh, does, yes. does the worksheet for a student or the, just your group? Uh, it's, I backward it to my group. Um, can, you add, can you send it to the other students? Okay. Yeah. We already shared them in the group. You shared it? Yes. You shared it with the girls and the boys and everything? Okay. Good. Because I don't want people asking me where this works. Everybody has this group. Okay. Alright. So, everybody ready for ch chapter 3? Yes. Okay. So, this is basically repeating what we already know before, okay? To be living, it has to have cells and cell products like, uh, you know, macromolecules, alright? Lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acid. So, and one cell is considered as the smallest unit, okay? And these cells are coming from pre existing. So, there has to be a cell, so the new cells can come from there. They reproduce to form new cells. All right, key things to know here. The differences in similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And this is really well summarized here. Okay? This, we go to this one. Everything is summarized here, okay? From all these slides, okay? Everything is summarized here. So this is key. Now, in the first... Uh, a line here we see so in the first row we see that they have similarities okay mm -hmm. they both have plasma membrane they have the DNA genetic material they have uh, cytoplasm so prokaryotes eukaryotes are similar in that sense so make sure you know the similarity what about the difference okay so differences they have a DNA but no nucleus so it's in the nuclear Remember that, okay? What about the DNA here? It's in the nucleus, it has, it's contained and maintained in what? In a membrane. In a membrane. Yeah. Yeah. Here yeah. there is no membrane, okay? And this is double membrane, eh? Yes, it's a, it's a double membrane, okay? So remember that. So you could have a membrane and... Uh, yeah, this nucleus doesn't have a membrane. The nucleus has a membrane, okay? It's, so the DNA in... And eukaryotes is contained inside a double membrane. double membrane, okay? Or generally membrane, okay? So here we have no membrane organelles, membrane bound organelles, okay? Here we have membrane bound organelles like uh, Golgi, like mitochondria, like endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, nucleus. All these are membrane bound. Where here we only find non membrane bound organelles or structures like ribosomes, okay? Uh, so, what are examples of non membrane bound organelles? Uh, ribosome, so, the cytoskeleton, uh, centrioles. Um, no, peroxisome is membrane bound. There. Huh? Mentioned in the slide. Yeah, it's here. <coughs> right here, okay? There's a lot. You know this, right? We're going to be outside. Very good sign of the Yeah. Okay. So we said that this is very important, okay? Okay. So with the examples of bacteria, archaea, which are prokaryotes, okay? You know, in the rest of the kingdoms in the, the eukaryotes, all the eukaryotes, okay? So key things. Know the similarity and the differences. And this this table is very good. All the bacteria are prokaryotes? Yes, bacteria, bacteria, bacteria archaea, prokaryotes. Got that? Yeah. yeah no. Alright. Uh, another thing to remember is that, remember, cell structure reflects its function. Yes. So, if you have a long cell, it reflects its function because it's used for transmitting impulses, you know, in the nerve tissue, from the brain to the muscle to yes. move it. It's a long cell. So, if you had a short cell, can it do that function? No. 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 So, the structure of a long cell is important for its function of transmitting impulse. So, structure reflects function. function. So, and 
because of that, because of this structure function relationship, the cell can do many things, okay? It can gather raw materials. So, a uh, raw materials it has a particular uh, columnar epithelium in the uh, small intestine. If it was two or three layers of long, it can't do it. It needs to have like one layer of columnar okay, epithelium to take up the nutrients. In the, in the lungs, we find squamous, simple squamous epithelia, remember? Yes, yes. The flat epithelia yes. is very important. That shape is important to exchange gases, oxygen very quickly. To stretch, uh, yeah. So in the, when you breathe air, we have flat cells, remember? Like yeah, a plate yeah, yeah. in the lungs. So oxygen can pass quickly through. All right, so then there's other functions. We yeah, excrete waste, make micromolars, grow, and reproduce. So all these functions depend on the structure of the, <coughs> of the cell. So different cells will have different functions. Some uh, will have will make more macromolecules, some don't grow, so some, uh, 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 you know, in this case, you know, I show you three different types of cells, okay? So these muscle uh, cells, they have lots of these fibers because they contraction movement, okay? Here, you have these long projection, this is a nerve cell, it's important for electrical impulses. Here is the kidney. You see the cube shaped cells in the kidney? Yes. It's important yeah. to reabsorb water in ions, okay? So, if, so, and the other thing is, we, with, it's important to know that, uh, that the se cell surface to volume ratio is kept high. Remember that cells which are small have a high surface to volume ratio. So if a cell increases in size, what happens to its sur uh, surface to cell volume ratio? Increase. It increases, okay? It becomes less efficient. Okay, so, uh, so lesson two, we talk about the organelles, the different organelles, their structures and their functions. Sometimes we find them to be membrane bound or non-membrane bound. So membrane bound, uh, like the nucleus, which have a double membrane. Mitochondria have a double membrane or a single membrane. Endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, vesicles, lysosomes and peroxisomes, okay? We find structures or organelles that are non-membrane bound. So nucleolus, which is inside the nucleus. The ribosomes, remember, produce the proteins. Centrioles, important in cell division. And the cytoskeleton helps for the support of the cell. So the nucleus is like the control center. Remember the nucleus is a double membrane uh, bound organelle and this is where the genetic material is, the DNA. So inside we find the DNA and it's contained in this double membrane, uh, uh, the, the DNA, okay? We find these pores, okay? Holes in the nuclear membrane which are called nuclear pores. This is important for allowing protein and RNA to move in and out of the nucleus, but it prevents DNA, okay? So DNA cannot move. There's another region called the nucleolus, a dense region inside the nucleus, where the subunits, okay? The subunits, the small and large subunits of the ribosome are assembled, put together, okay? So they form from uh, ribosomal RNA and ribosomal proteins, okay? So this is happening in the nucleolus. The nucleoplasm is similar to the cytoplasm, okay? Or the cytosol inside the cytoplasm. Similar fluid in ions, okay? But we call it a nucleoplasm, all right? So the ribosomes, Remember they're non-membrane bound, okay? So we find ribosomes in prokaryotes as well, in eukaryotes. We find them in two forms. So it's the key thing to remember is that there's free ribosomes like these dots floating in the cytosol, or they're bound to the endoplasmic reticulum. We call them rough endoplasmic reticulum. So in terms of what sort of proteins they make, so the free-floating ribosome, they make proteins that are used immediately within the cell. Like for the cytoskeleton, you know, tubulin and actin. Okay? 
So these proteins are made by free floating ribosomes. Okay, so bound ribosomes, bound means they attach to the ER. Okay, these uh, ribosomes they make proteins that are transported or packaged or sent to different locations in the uh, cell, like the plasma membrane or secreted or form peroxisomes or form lysosomes. Okay. So, the bound ribosomes make those. The cytomembrane system or the endomembrane system, which consists of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi and the vesicles are involved in the production of proteins and lipids and packaging them and shipping them to various destinations in and out of the cell. Okay. So if you have a look at it, we find first in the uh, endomembrane system the endoplasmic reticulum. And in the endoplasmic reticulum is made up of these folds. You see this? With a fluid filled space inside it. So inside this we find fluid. Okay? We have two types. We have the rough, which have the ribosomes, and we have the smooth, which have no ribosomes. So this uh, the, the these ones make protein. These ones make lipids. Okay. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum, when it makes the protein, the proteins are then uh, moved moved into this fluid filled space, and they are sent to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Lipids include hormones. So lipids, hormones are lipids. Okay. Some hormones, not all, okay? Like uh, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, uh, aldosterone. These are what we call steroid hormones. These are lipid hormones. They have that four carbon ring, remember? Like cholesterol. So, uh, it makes the protein, it enters this fluid filled space, and then it uh, is sent to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we get uh, production of lipids and some hormones, okay? As we mentioned, well, like including. lipid hormones, okay? Cholesterol bites, steroid hormones. So what happens here is both this protein coming from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the lipids that are synthesized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they form vesicles and they're transported to the Golgi right. apparatus body. And rough, we make proteins and packaging and smoke. Yes, so they 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 package and send to the Golgi from the smooth, together with the lipids. So once they reach the Golgi, what happens is that the vesicles coming from the SER they fuse to the Golgi, and this is where the refining okay of these products happen so they modify they then package into further vesicles okay and they're distributed to the different parts of the cell they can form secretary vesicles okay and then the product can be secreted out of the cell yeah. uh, they can also form lysosomes or peroxisomes so these are coming from the Golgi apparatus and the Golgi apparatus is if you look at the structure, it looks like these plates stack one on top of another, like pancakes. You know when you put pancakes, you put them on top of one another. So important to note that the Golgi is in, uh, functions in refining the products of the ER, packaging them into vesicles, and then distributing them to the different parts of the cell where their final destination will be. Either secretory vesicles, lysosomes, or peroxisomes. So the different type of vesicles we find in the uh, cell, we find vesicles that are involved in shipping or storing. We find vesicles that are secretory. We find endocytic vesicles. We find peroxisomes and lysosomes. Okay. So the vesicles that ship and store cellular products. They can, can come from the endoplasmic reticulum or the Golgi. So sometimes 
these vesicles can stay inside the cell, they, they can be stored, okay, so they can act as storages until the cell requires them, okay, so they can act as uh, a store inside the cell. The second type is the secondary vesicles, they're coming from the Golgi, okay, to the outside of the cell. So secretary vesicles come from the Golgi and they fuse and move. They migrate to the plasma membrane, okay? Where they fuse with the plasma membrane and release their content into the outside of the cell. Endocytic vesicles, they're coming from outside of the cell. So, for example, they're engulfing bacteria or material from outside of the cell and brought into the cell. So by endocytosis. Peroxisome and lysosomes, these are involved in detoxification and uh, room, uh, containing digestive enzymes to break down cellular parts or bacteria or debris. So peroxisomes are very important in removing wastes like alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. So they break it down and then once it's broken down, it's excreted out of the cell. The same thing happens here in lysosomes where they break down bacteria or residual waste and then once it's broken down it's secreted out of the cell. So remember three types of vesicles are secreted. Secretary vesicles, peroxisomes and lysosomes.